Well, the bottom line is we've ended up with a situation where the government has got involved with this and they're basically turning around and saying we'll get no pay rise, uh, they're going to attack our terms and conditions and they're going to axe thousands of rail workers' jobs, potentially the closure of every ticket office in the country, the loss of um, 3,500 rail maintenance jobs which will have a detrimental effect on track safety um, and potentially lots of other jobs as well and on top of that attacks those who will be left will have their terms and conditions attacked so we, we can't accept that um, and what we also need to do is say to them with inflation at 11% we need a pay rise mm -hmm. we haven't had a pay rise for two years um, the cost of everything's going up energy food heating lighting everything um, you name it, it's all it's up, not, man. It's not, it's not feasible Including to carry on like this. They give them well, pay. they've just gave themselves, they've just had, the MPs have had a £2,000 a year pay rise. Yeah. But even their wages pale into insignificance with some of the railway bosses, like the boss of Network Rail, who's on half a million a year, he's, uh, some of his regional directors, £330,000 a year, and they're telling us to tighten our belts. Yeah, Are these people real? Are they real? Like the guy over the Bank of England, man. Shit. Absolutely, yeah. the guy in the Bank of England. But the other thing is, I think it's worth saying that I don't think any of us want to be on strike. Nobody wants to be on strike. But if you look at the ballot results among our members, in my company, the companies I've been involved in, it's over 90% in favour of strike action. Wow, that's that's not because people want to go on strike. That's a, a sign of anger and frustration. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that they want somebody to do something to help them, to get that job security, to get them a bit of a pay rise. Not as much as the people over here, by the way. You know, we're, we're reasonable people. We don't want the same sort of money that this lot's on. But you'd be entitled to for what you do compared to what they do. Well, they only wreck the country, we exactly. run it. Yeah. <laughs> we keep the trains running. All through the pandemic, our members worked. Uh, before we had vaccines, in some cases as well, when it first started, before we even had uh, uh, restrictions in terms of facial coverings and stuff, our members were out there keeping the country moving and moving, moving uh, essential workers around and moving goods around for the shops as well. And we're now being told that we've got to lose our jobs that we've got to have virtually a pay freeze and our terms and conditions have got to be attacked. That's not feasible. And when the government turn around and say, well, we gave you all this money um, during COVID. No, they didn't. They kept the railways running during COVID because the country needed them to be running. Exactly. They're not saying to any of the other employees, and quite rightly so, who were furloughed, well, we, we're not going to give you any, any money going forward and your companies are going to get, I'll have to pay it all back, like we've been told. So it's going to be what stage again? We're out on strike on Tuesday next week, on Thursday and on Saturday, unless someone comes to their senses. Yeah, yeah. And we'll be out after that as well. And that's not because we want to be, it's because we can't course. afford yeah, not yeah, to yeah, be. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, man. So what happens if that doesn't work? There'll be more. Yeah. There'll be more. You, you can't give up, man. You can't. Well, we're not in a position to be able to give up, um, to allow them to trample all over us yeah. like this. People in this place behind us need to get real. And they're the people who in many cases are really behind it because we've heard in the last few days that Grant Shapps, the transport secretary, is stopping the train companies and network rail from having proper discussions with us and proper negotiations. That's shameful if that's the case. He's refusing to talk to us, but he's actually behind the strings pulling his puppets to run the train companies. Well, I wish you all the best. We'll battle on. And if it's us today, it's someone else tomorrow and yeah, we'll be yeah. standing alongside anybody else who's got the same sort of issues and struggles because we're all workers when it comes down yeah. to it. Thank you, Ria. Now, before I introduce our next great speaker, bit of a public service announcement. We've got thousands of people still on late hall and we've got some gaps in the middle of the square. So, uh, I don't want to encourage the staff here, but if people can move up gently and fill those gaps because let's get every comrade So our next great speaker is the Joint General Secretary of the National Education Union, Karen Corney! Thank you Paul. Brothers and sisters, this is an amazing demonstration. This is the biggest DUC demonstration since 2011. This is big enough that all of us can go back feeling positive and thinking that we can do more. I've been really proud to march at the head of a bunch of education workers from my union, the NEU, from the NISUWT, from EIS, 
from the NIXT, from UCU, they're not in the square. The square isn't big enough to have them in, but they are here and they're at the back. They're hopefully listening on the square. Fucking right, man. 